Revolution. Yeah, buckle up. World Revolution. It's a world revolution. Yeah, buckle up. Tune in to the low revolution. My dick is tatted. What is up, people? This is Poncho Muller. Welcome to the Little Revolution Podcast. This is my buddy Wee Man right here. Hello. We're about to rock and roll. We have our new guest, acting superstar. <laughs> also was a teacher of mine for like two years at the Hollywood Playground. Let's give it up for Robert Rustler. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. You I'm think you could do- stoked yeah. right now to be here with <laughs> you guys. Yeah. I gotta yeah. just tell you, like- yeah. Forget like, oh, composure. Like, dude, I'm hanging out with two fucking G's right now and I'm huh. pretty stoked. Oh, yeah, man. There, there's zero composure on this show. <laughs> and by the way, do you ever see two little people at the same time in a day? Only in a dream. Uh, better buy a lottery <laughs> ticket. Or, or the circus. <laughs> or yeah, at the circus. Maybe Do they in still Vegas. have dwarves in circus or midgets in circus? You know what? It might be like a whole thing. You can't do that anymore. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. And you, you can't, can't say midget, I thought. What's up with that? On this show, you can. We say, right. say like, midget. We're trying you can to say whatever you want. You want. Yeah, we, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. It's your show. <laughs> you, you can't say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna t- <laughs> I don't know what like the effects will be, but we 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 we, we say don't care. midget. We we don't care about that word really. Uh, yep. When we both grew up in the time we're older, that was the only word there was. Now there's like so many of them that it's like Jesus, dude. Like I just feel like some of them are just like more derogatory than like it's almost like pathetic. Like a short king. Like really. That's Shirt like, King. Yeah, that that's the new one that people say now, and it's really ridiculous. Shirt King's a given. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, duh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I called my penis. In the <laughs> oh, I'm sure you did. And we're going to get to that. Or Longfellow. <laughs> yeah. Longfellow. So, yeah. How That's have you been, good. Robert? Excellent What's the good. story? Like, what, what are, you, are you working right now on anything? Any? If I'm being really honest with you guys, man, I'm happy. I'm, 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 I got joy in my life, man. I'm, I'm so free with my wife. I'm That's in great. love. I got four beautiful kids. Yeah, you, you do. Go. I have a, a a whole host and plethora of friends, man, that love me and that I love, and my life is full. I'm fulfilled, man. I got purpose, you know, being a father. Yeah. And work is jamming, by the way. You know, yeah. I'm working on some some new gigs, and oh uh, man, I just uh, I'm blessed. Are you are you surfing? Do you surf? I do a little surfing. Okay. Yeah. Because you got the tan. I, I mean, you got I a surf- nice tan. <laughs> I mean, I surf a lot. I grew up surfing, but I've I've been on an injury, so okay. I've just been chilling a little bit. But would you? All hurt? three of my sons surf. Oh, nice. Yeah. Do uh, they hurt skate? My shoulder. Do they skate too? They skate. Nice. Yeah. Play football. One of them like fights too. Yeah, Muay Thai. My son James. Is that scary to go like watch him fight? Like when he yeah, gets hit and man, shit, you're like, God damn it! Like it's nerve wracking. Yeah, you know? I, bet. I bet. He went to Thailand and he got a first round knockout in Thailand, which was pretty exciting. Wow. Damn. Yeah. You went to Thailand and did the same thing, didn't you? Yeah, with I jackass. In, I fought in Thailand. Oh really? Yeah. What else did you do in Thailand? <laughs> <laughs> I stayed away. Uh, I stayed away. Happy ending. No, I stayed away from uh, the lady boys. Oh, that's hello, for sure. man. <laughs> no, you definitely. They have ladies dance like you are. You're like, no, that's a girl. That's a, and everybody's like, no, that is a dude, right? And you're like, you know what? I'm just staying away from everybody. Uh, like, Adam's apple check. Oh yeah, pee pee check. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Check. Yeah, that sounds crazy. Yeah, they like just have to check everything. Yeah, <laughs> <And you> just <laughs> or not. So you're an <laughs> when in Thailand, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> you're an acting coach. You, yes, sir. you do that. And this guy is taking your class. How was he? Because, because I mean, I have my judgment on his acting, but that's me, an outsider. I want to hear it from the Zen teacher. Ah, uh, well, yeah, actually, right from the start, you came in with uh, great intuition, and you just made a lot of progress as he was in the class. But I don't really take credit for it because really what I do at the Hollywood Playground is I allow actors to discover what it is they have to offer as artists. Mm-hmm. So instead of like giving these classes of this is what you should do, which a lot of acting coaches do, they sit there and they're not prepared to do the things that they're asking the actors mm-hmm. to do, yeah. which is to be open and transparent and authentic and all those things. Mm-hmm. But you know, with Pancho, he was always open 
and he was always willing to take direction. Yeah. And that's the best uh, attribute of an actor is coming in prepared and then being open to take direction without taking it personally. Yeah. That's good because I didn't want to blame you for the B movies he's been in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you're killing game, bro. Ah, uh, thank you, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm really I'm proud teasing. of you. I know, I know you're teasing, yeah. but like, I'm really proud of you. Yeah, thank you. And I and I and I love you know what you're doing with uh, your with your life, man, uh, because you have ambition and you're willing to do what most unsuccessful people aren't willing to do, which is put in the work. Yeah, you got to earn it. Absolutely. One of the things with Robert too, with 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 his class, like if he's giving you direction and then you just aren't like taking it he'll just go up and do it oh nice like he's like an actor's director kind of yeah. thing where he's like this is what i want and then he'll go up and do it and you're like oh my god because that happened with me a few times i'm like now i get it now and, i get and, and, what and in you that want context that's exactly what i was saying before which is it's not about saying hey this is the right way it's about being uh transparent enough and open enough to go up and and show realness. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and and be vulnerable. Totally. Uh, and and be willing to fall on your head and fail in class and be willing to be your best creative self. Yeah. Right? So yeah. if you're if you're not afraid of being wrong, bad, cuz that's exactly the opposite of what it should be, right? It's yeah. not about being right, it's about being truthful to what it is. That's fair in life like you should wake up and be that way in life in general you know what i mean i agree most people once they fail once give up and it's like no life is mainly failure and you're then gonna succeed mm -hmm. you know you're gonna go through a lot of pain first but you don't want the little like one cent bubble gum excitement out of life you want the fucking i got the fucking best steak in the world out of life you know? When you're unwilling to take off the masks, because yeah. we all wear them, right? Yeah. But uh, as, as an artist, whether you're doing music or poetry or painting or acting or whatever it may be, what you guys are doing here right now, you know, I think the uh, goal is to be authentic. Mm -hmm. And Very. in order to do that, you know, we show our center and it's not really about what we think as much as how we feel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So See, with 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 acting, you you've been doing it since the 80s? Yes. Nice. And when when killing you, it since no, the 80s. No, killing it too. Yeah. Working with some big big time actors. Um I always saw you as like as as far as like your earlier movies, you were like the bad boy, rebel kind of How how was that? Like like as far as like art like, imitating life? <laughs> no, 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 imitating life, but also like, I mean, you're you were probably hooking up with a lot of beautiful actresses, models. That was just part of the lifestyle. It seemed back in those days. Absolutely. I mean, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I mean, I grew up in the '70s and '80s, and um, I I was lucky. I was fortunate and I was driven, you know, I, I worked hard. I went to school. I went to uh, the loft studio in Hollywood and studied. And uh, in the beginning, it was super intimidating and I didn't think I could do it. I knew I could. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's even how I got my first agent at ICM. I went in there for a meeting and they said, what makes you think you can do this? And I said, I, I don't think I can. Yeah. And they said, then what are you doing here? I said, well, my mind tells me I can't, but my heart knows I was born for this. Yeah. And I didn't premeditate that answer. That was just really the honest truth. And they signed me on the spot. Nice. I loved your parts, man. And you got to work with some really amazing actors like Robert Downey Jr. Like, did you know that he was like that gifted? Like when you worked with him on Weird Science? Like, cause I mean, he was going through some stuff back then. Uh, from the moment I met him, I, I, I had a feeling that he was going to be my mentor. Nice. Uh, he was experienced. I mean, he's a renaissance man. Yeah. I mean, come on, dude. I just, he's one of the funniest individuals I've ever met. He's, <laughs> he's so schooled and cultured, and he's a true artist. You know, he plays music. He sings. He acts. He paints. He's, um, 
um, got a lot of empathy and compassion. And uh, he's the most uninhibited actor I've ever met. And learning from him in the beginning of my career and stomping Hollywood out in New York with, uh, with him in the 80s was uh, life-changing, man. Like that, man. Yeah. Yeah, what a mentor, too, to have, like, as far as, like, with acting, you know, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. And as a friend, and um, I, I love him, you know. Um, he's family to me. We're still close, and my kids adore him, and I, I love his kids. Yeah. And uh, we um, we always, you know, it's like, bro, you know when you connect with somebody, yeah. right? And then no matter how much time passes, it's like no time has passed yeah. because you're always connected in that way. I mm -hmm. always feel like that about my skate buddies that like we're, we're, that we used to travel together and like tour together and stuff. It's I, I haven't seen them for ages and I'll run into them and they'll be like it was yesterday. Like we know everything about it's each like other. It's like seeing you today. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen you in a while, but I mean, come on, bro. Yeah. When's the last time you did a class? Um, I haven't done a class for a long time, probably like since before the pandemic, like years before the pandemic. Yeah. But I did his class for, for a long time and then he stopped doing the class for a little bit and then it would like go be on and off depending on like the stability of like the amount of uh, actors or students that you were getting. Well, I was really for the pandemic, yeah. right? So we took a break for the yeah. pandemic. I said, I go, hey, let's see what happens with this COVID thing. So we're going to take a two-week break, <laughs> cut to four years later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew, yeah. right? Well, what's no. dope about uh, Robert is he would bring in his buddies, like his like big-time buddies, and not tell anybody. And then you'd show up to class, and like Josh Brolin would be sitting in class because he knew Josh Brolin. Just watching you is like, what the fuck is going on? Or um, Anthony Hopkins, like big time actors, like just sitting in class. And that doesn't happen in any other acting class that I, I ever did. I wanted actors to be able to learn from the horse's mouths, you know, uh -huh. and um, I teach fundamentals, yeah. but really what I was saying earlier is it's really about allowing actors to discover through trial and error. Uh -huh. But when other actors, directors, producers, even cinematographers, I would have come in and put the actors through marks and lights and, yeah. Everything that you run into as a working actor mm -hmm. in television. And How film. to even deal like in the set life, you know, because Absolutely. they don't How teach you that in yourself, school. How to be a pro. All those things are important, you know. And, and when those uh, guests would come in, um, it was really special. I was, I was learning a lot as well, you know, and yeah. I think that that's the great thing about being an artist is you never really stop learning. You just keep progressing. Yeah. Do any of your kids act? My or? son Johnny's in my class now. Johnny Ray Russell. Is that the young one? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. He's um, He's got good looking kids. He's dude. jamming. Like, like, yeah. yeah. I'm really proud of him as well. Are they, are, they, are they bringing home girls? And you're like, whoa, like Jesus. They're rustlers. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, doing, uh, they're doing all right in the girl department. Yeah. Yes. No, no, no problems there. And then you got a young one, a real young one. Yeah, I got a young daughter, Mary. Yeah. And they're just probably protective of her. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's the center of the family, man. Yeah. She's just light of my life. Nice. When do you, you, do you have, do you think, you know, like, so you came up, did you really take acting classes or anything? You had the heart where you knew, like, you were going to be an actor, you know? And most people who act or are actors, it's more of a natural thing than a taught thing. Mm hmm. Um, like say like Danny Trejo is a perfect example, mm -hmm. just went to set one day and next thing you know, he's a movie star, you know, do you feel that's more happening or do you feel like, and I get it, you're, you're a teacher. Do you think a lot of people come from learning it as a trade? I think it's really important to go to class. I think it's important because what Anthony Hopkins really reiterated over and over in class it's about connection and execution right so if you're gifted enough to be connected in that way and open yeah and you have a natural kind of x factor ability mm -hmm. and then you hone your craft by uh studying preparing and uh figuring out or allowing revelations to happen as it is what I mean is, you know, when, when you have these epiphanies or things dawn on you in the work, as opposed to having it all figured out intellectually. 
So the, the connection and the execution is really important. And I would say to anybody, even Danny Trejo, he, he was doing roles that were basically him playing himself yeah. or familiar. You know, he, yeah. was, he, was, he was playing a, his first role was that, can, can you play a, a convict? Yeah. And he's like, I'll give it a shot, right? <laughs> <laughs> he just got out of yeah, prison. prison right? Right? Yeah. But over the years, he's also been honing his craft and he's been r really um, progressing as 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 he's moved through his fantastic career, yeah, like with experience, he's getting better and better. Yeah, just like you know, I watch guys like George Clooney, whom I did my first commercial with in 1983. Great guy, his success couldn't happen to a nicer, better person. I mm -hmm. love that dude, and I watched him over the years just keep progressing and getting better and better. Like I watched Brad Pitt. You know, Brad Pitt started out great, Thelma and Louise and. The stuff he did with Ricky Schroeder even before or whatever. But watching his career just keep getting better and better and his work just more and more meaningful or whatever. Like, I'm, I'm big fans of those guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, it's good. What are you going to say? Um, I remember in class when, like, watching you deal with, like, kind of students that were greener as, like, as, like, I... I um, like a year into it and seeing the students come in and they would be like reading these books for like a scene, like reading these monologues and literally just reading the whole time on stage and like, and, and watching Robert just kind of like deal with it. Like, and how am I going to direct this person? Because he doesn't get it yet. He doesn't. I know that feeling. Yeah. It's like when someone brings cliff notes to the podcast and they're reading them off the card instead of just being natural like a lunchtime meeting yeah, yeah. same I mean, thing no yeah. i get it no i get it i i even use notes on stage when i do stand up that's just kind of part of the process i know i'm just oh he's no. breaking your balls yeah he's he, it, that's what this podcast is all about all right, yeah. it's a pissing contest yeah. count me yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know I, I never set out to be an acting teacher yeah, yeah. I, I, I started doing scene work with actors to practice pulling performances out of actors because my wife said it to me at the time. She said, you know, you want to direct movies and, you know, as an actor, lights and lenses and blocking and all these things. <laughs> and you're a great storyteller. But what a lot of directors, I think, are missing is knowing the craft and then being able to work with different personalities like you were just talking about. You know, the way I approach one actor may be very different from the way I would approach another. And so sometimes kid gloves works really well and patience and tolerance and allowing people to find what they're doing instead of pointing the finger at them. And then there's other actors that I've worked with that have actually needed, you know, um, to get snagged and be like, yo, dude, like drop the bullshit, you know. Mm -hmm. especially when they come in with a chip on their shoulder and they're doing all kinds of habits that are distracting me from what's really going on, which is fine, but don't get cocky about it. Yeah. Because once you do, that's when you're going to get checked. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm not that kind of a director and I, I haven't had a lot of that experience. I haven't had a lot of actors, maybe a handful come in, where I'm like, yo, um, I don't know if this class is for you. Yeah. Because when we start to work together or when they're working with the other actors, the, the worst thing you can be is a prima donna. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, actors take it personally too. Like as far as like they'll go up and put up a scene and then you'll be like, cool. Now can you try it this way with this direction? They're like, but my way is the right way. Like why would you want me to do it that way? My way is mm -hmm. right. Like, and you're like, I'm not like, questioning the way you did it i'm just seeing if you could do it another way <laughs> absolutely and, and, and that's what a director is going to look for nine times out of ten in an audition a lot of actors may think that getting a direction to do it differently means that they did something wrong to begin with but that's not the case at all mm -hmm. if a director doesn't like in my opinion if a director doesn't usually like what you're doing they're not going to even give you direction but the reason why they want to give you direction is because they want to know that they can rely on you to take direction. Because if I have a film that I'm directing and I'm responsible for $20 million and making this movie right, 
I'm going to want to work with an actor that's going to be open to taking direction and not be stubborn or a one trick pony. Yeah. With uh, with when you were shooting Jackass, Jason, did you did you um, help come up with any of the stunts that you were involved oh, in? Oh yeah, yeah. All the time. So you did you ever throw things at them and they're like, "Nah, we can't do that." Or there was the the big gambit we talk about all the time. So we knew Bam was coming a day later, and they're like, "Okay, we got to come back to get him." I'm like, "Well, let's antique him. Let's turn this up." And at first they're like, no, no, we're not doing that. Just keep it the same way. <laughs> what did we end up doing? And antiquing him. And it's like, yeah, I knew it. Like, you know, but at first they were very standoffish about it. Like, no, it's set already. It's this way. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and I come in the morning. I'm like, oh, really? Heard my idea. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, but no, we've. But Hold on. Let's talk about Jackass for a second, man. <laughs> yeah. I love Jackass. Yeah. <laughs> You guys actually did a parody on Thrashing that was super cool. Yeah. Yeah. We did early in, during the TV show days. Oh, that was for the TV show. Yeah, we did movies. that. And we went back to that ditch in... Uh, Bronson Canyon. Bronson Canyon, Canyon, Canyon that's, ditch. Yeah. yeah. That's a big skate spot still. No, like it that. is. Yeah. Yeah, a couple so. of the cast members were at the Santa Monica Pier one night, and they were like, what's up, bro? We just did a parody on your movie. And I was like... <laughs> Oh, these guys are so fucking raging, right? <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, not a month later, Jackass blew up. And uh, and I've just been a fan ever since. Nice. Well, when you when you shot Thrashing, was, uh, were you friends with a lot of those dudes already that skated? Were you involved in that world? Uh, I mean, I grew up skating. Okay. You know, uh, but uh, I had met Christian Hasoy at a friend's ramp in Westchester mm. one time. And then I would see him skating at Marina Skate Park when he was a little grommet, just killing it in the front keyhole. Yeah. And then, um, but no, I, I, I didn't know any of those guys, but we are still to this day lifelong friends since that movie. That's fucking awesome. It's crazy like how certain movies do that with people because I know, I, I, I feel like when I work here in LA, like it's if like you're not in the scene with the person in the movie, you never see him. Like, but when you work on location, or you never meet him. But when you work on location, you're kind of like in another state, or that's what that means, uh, or country. You're kind of forced to like kind of stay in the same hotel, so you're like run into each other, go din go go eat dinner, or go get coffee, and so you're kind of forced to like hang out with each other, whereas mm -hmm. and meet each other and like become lifelong friends, whereas in other movies like it sucks like you never get to if you're not in the scene with the person you just don't meet them you know i miss that a little bit from my own experience doing this 40 years you know a lot of the movies i did in the beginning there was much more of a camaraderie and mm -hmm. even if we weren't on location like thrashing we all lived here and we were shooting in hollywood venice mm. santa monica uh up up in the canyons when we did the downhill in malibu and all that so you and feel like it's not happen doesn't happen nowadays I, as I much. Feel, I feel like it do not as much. Yeah, I feel like not as much. Uh, but then again, you know, I, I did a movie not too long ago called Garden of Eden that's coming out soon, and the same thing happened there. Like at the end of the show, you're all hugging each other because you're like family, you know. Yeah. Because you, you when you work hard for that many hours a day and you really get to know each other in that way, which is very intimate. Um, you know, there, there's a connection that's, that's not lost. I feel like it's like family. You just made a big family production together and everyone, you know, committed. So it's like a chain. Absolutely. There was no weak one and everybody's yeah. just excited. Like we did this. And I was you lucky know? too, man. Cause my first movie was a John Hughes movie. And that's what John Hughes was known for was using a lot of the same cast and crew. And it was it was it was very personal, and uh, I I I also did a couple Roger Corman movies in the '80s, and he was known for that. You know, um, when you went on when I went on to a Roger Corman set, everybody was on the same page, and everybody pulled for each other, mm. and all the departments like connected up, and there was an understanding that we have this much time, and this is the story that we're telling. And everybody contributes. And and I just kind of took that with me in every other job that I did, whether there wasn't that connection with everybody else or not. Uh, it really taught me a great work ethic. 
That's a good right. one. My buddy works for a company that wraps planes and stuff, like started off doing cars and all that, but figured out a fiber to do like planes and stuff for up in aerospace. And he was doing one for a company and they wanted both sides of the plane wrapped. The art department did a, you know, a mock-up, put the logo like certain way on the plane, but they wanted to change it a little so it looked equal on the plane. Passed through everybody's hands to get the okay, okay, okay. Started wrapping it. The logo, like their actual logo, got changed a little to be put so that it looked good for the plane. The CEO came over and goes, that's completely wrong. Right. right? Was yeah. mad. And everybody's like, oh, crap. And he goes, you know what, though? Can't point fingers. It went through everybody's hands. We're all to blame. So it's everyone's fault. Nobody's at fault here. Let's just fix the problem and keep moving on. Mm -hmm. And just went with it. And I mean, I that's like, movie making 101, right? That's yeah. When there's a problem, you get into the solution. You don't, you don't blame. Wallow in the problem. Nope. Mm -hmm. You yeah. just, let's go. Wash it out. Do this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that's how so. I am with my children. You know, when, when, when challenges come up or whatever, instead of, you know, staying in the problem, like, let's get to the, the solution. solution. Yep. Exactly. And I, sometimes I got to whoop that ass to get that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's way part of the solution. Uh, the solution. Nobody <laughs> does that anymore. <laughs> Am I the only one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, man. Speaking of which, you said you're coming out with a new movie, or you're in a new movie? Yes. Are you producing it, directing it, or just acting in this it? This one is, uh, I'm acting. I got a couple movies coming out. Okay. Um, one's called Garden of Eden. Yep. Acting. Uh, oh, one of your guests was in the movie with me, Gigi Gustin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gigi. Yeah. Nice. La, 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 yeah. Gigi. Yeah. 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 I was in another, a couple other movies with her. She's fantastic. Yeah, yeah she's, she's a lot of energy. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. And then the other movie is called Pretty Boy. Nice. So Garden of Eden, is that a whore? Yes. Nice. And I play the evil, twisted, sick, demented, raging sex addict. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness, man. Sounds like I, a good one. I, I'm dude. sure you brought a lot to the table, Robert. <laughs> I, am, I am this religious fanatic cross-dressing uh, freak in this movie, dude. And I went. 100% committed. Damn. You have to. Have to. Yeah. I mean, there was no other way. And you know what? You're right, because I could have actually mailed it in a little bit. No. Or pulled. Mm -mm. And I just, I told the director, Marcel Walls, who's a fantastic, very talented director from Germany. Mm -hmm. I did Blood Feast with him as well. I just did, did uh, Brute 1986 with him. Nice. Oh, yeah. you work with Marcel? He's in yeah, 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 he's great. I love him. I like them. Look at I this told connection. him about you. I'd like to get my little vig on that. Um, <laughs> we want to know what he thinks of your acting. Oh, he'll he'll love it. <laughs> Germans love my acting. Absolutely. Uns <laughs> reinstecken. <laughs> ah! Germans are sick. Yeah, that's I know. why I love them. Uh, but but when in this movie, uh, I knew when I was talking to Marcel about it because. I read the script and I had to, I got to tell you, even I was a little taken aback. Mm. I was like, damn, Marcel, you know, um, this could be a little controversial, maybe a little politically incorrect. And he was like, no, 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 no. And he explained his direction of what the film's messaging was and to be able to expose some. Uh, some ditty shit like that's been going on oh, like, yeah. in this little circle. Yep. Right? No ditty. The freak offs. Uh, you guys have probably had some freak offs in this room. I, <laughs> I think I can smell it. I think Kata has them in that room. Right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but to go 100% committed was the only way that I knew it would work. Uh, mm. Because if I didn't commit, then I wasn't being truthful to. Um, the dedication of what this character's mindset and disposition was, and it wouldn't ring true to expose these things correctly if I pulled back yeah. or if I just tried to play it safe. Forget that. I went 100%, and uh, he allowed me to do it and, and gave me great support while I was doing it. I think his movies will be really good for the, for the horror convention world. 
for that for the horror community because they they are so out there yeah and stuff and a lot of them are like homages to like like 80s slasher horror films or at least the ones that i've been involved in so people really like that and that and then like the practical effects and stuff is always great to have on set um he kind of stayed away from the cgi which is what i love but yeah no he's a he's a good director man well you know there's there's quite a few films that i did early on that weren't right away successful but have become cult classics since Mm -hmm. and i think that a lot of his work is destined for that later yeah i think people will kind of recognize from the bulk of his work and it'll gain more and more popularity as the years go on nice i i uh i've seen you at some horror conventions and you 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 sometimes sell the the skateboard the the the, from uh thrashing with your autograph on there where do you get those do you i make them Oh, you make them? Yeah, so okay. I, I do custom dagger boards. Nice. And uh, do you get them from Eddie? I, I He's uh, offered. So I love Eddie Radigue. Yeah, oh, what Eddie Radigue. Okay. What he's doing with the daggers, a yeah. uh, 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 whole line is killer, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, daggers for life, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what I love about thrashing, there's a lot of things I love. Yeah, about tell us what you love, man. Because I, I, I love that movie too. I loved, I loved making that movie. I loved everybody in the movie. Uh, I loved how kids were inspired by that movie, and the campiness and the corniness. Brolin and I, when we were making <laughs> that movie, we we were questioning a little bit of the bubblegum stuff. You got, you got to question we it. We were like, bro, come on, dude. Like, let's make this way more hardcore. Yeah. And you know, that was the demographic they were going for. They wanted young kids to be able to see it, and they wanted punk skaters to be able to relate. So they had, you know, the duality of the ramp locals and the daggers. But uh, what I what I love uh, about the daggers is the fans. Mm-hmm. Um, like when I'm at a convention. And I'm sitting around with a you know a bunch of other actors, and we're talking and we're vibing and we're meeting the fans. And then some thrashing fans come in, and they're <laughs> like, "What's up?" Right? They're just like, Whoa! They're getting all fucking crazy. And the other actors are like, "Bro, like, what did you do?" My buddy bought, and I'm like, "Thrashing from fans, you. dude. Yeah. I, I'll explain later." Yeah. yeah. And my, they go ahead. My my buddy's a, a really big fan of yours, and he's like. Like partners with like the trick or treat um, mask making company, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Justin Mabry. Yes, uh, he bought a board from you, and he's like a huge fan. He yeah. always he he's always like, you took classes with Robert Russler. I'm like, yeah, dude, he's my friend. He's like, really, dude? What's what's that like? I'm like, dude, it's dope. It's dope. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's you. a big fan, man. That's dope. Man. One time, I went to uh, <laughs> see Josh Brolin take a uh, an achievement award. Uh, at this film festival. He invited my wife and I and was sitting there with his dad. And I'd known his dad a long time too. And we had done a TV series together called Angel Falls, Mm -hmm. me and Jimmy Brolin. And and, uh, I love him. I love his whole family. And uh, they asked Brolin, what what movies out of all the movies that you've done is like your least favorite? And, Mm. And he thought about it and he goes i'd have to say thrashing what <laughs> and I, I i i fucking snatched him after the interview and i was like bro <laughs> do you realize what i know fuck? that you're in no country for old man and you're fucking thanos dude i get it fucking as thanos. josh is killing game right yeah but i said to him you got to remember how many kids were stoked on us dude mm-hmm. like, and still are if, they, if that's your least, I'm not trying to tell him how to feel or what to think, but I was like, you got to remember what kind of impact, because he was a little bit more apprehensive and, and I think a little bit more judgmental of his own performance. And I, and I told him, no, no, no. You know, first of all, he was really young. And that vulnerability and and that's like Chrissy, you know, he didn't like that because he, he's really hard on himself because he's a, he's a really great actor. Yeah. And so when he looks back on that, he gets a little he was getting a little embarrassed. I was like, no, that's the that's the magic of thrashing really is that campiness mixed with some of the great moments that we had, like our fight scene was sick. Yeah. And sometime later he had to retract and he goes my my buddy rustler kind of like straightened me out and i <laughs> and i said that thrashing was my least favorite but it's now become one of my favorites oh, because bad. he thought about it 
and realize that at the time and what we did and the directions that we were given, like we we did something that a lot of people are stoked on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you, know? you paved the way. It's a cult classic for sure. Cult classic. I think yeah. what I got out, out of thrashing is like, no matter like your differences, like at the end of the day in that movie, what brought you guys all together was skateboarding. You Absolutely. know, and you guys are all a family and that's kind of what I enjoyed about it. It was fucking awesome, man. Yeah. Not to mention all the times that we were shrooming during shooting. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously. I was getting paid to smoke marijuana cigarettes and skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> and it hit the big screen. Hell yeah. And then when we watched it, we were at the screening and we were like, dude, look how stoned you are right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. Uh, one That's night, it was my birthday. One night it was It was birthday? my birthday during the shooting of Thrashing. And the AD came over and said, hey, you got a couple hours. We're shooting some other stuff. Uh, are you just going to hang out? And I go, yeah, we're just going to hang out. And Tony Alba talked us in to go in to see the Chili Peppers. What? At nice. At Club Lingerie. And I was like, yo, like, I can't just leave, you know, because I was the only actor that night in the Daggers that had dialogue. Yeah. And I go, I got dialogue stuff coming up, and I, I can't just leave. And, and they they were just ripping They're me like, right there. They're like, whatever, pussy. Shut up, yeah. bitch. What? Like, yeah. It's your birthday, <laughs> yeah, bro. Let's, let's go, go see the That's Peppers, it. right? Yeah, the birthday. So we roll out, because you said I had a couple hours. We roll out. We see the Peppers at Club Lingerie. Fucking raging. Killer show, right? Come back hammered. And the whole set was just up in arms and pissed. Where have you been? I was like, whoa, you said I had a few hours off. We just went over and saw the Peppers gig. Really this quick. was before cell phones, too. They were like, <laughs> dumbass. They were hiding that they had a surprise party oh set for God. me and a stripper and a cake. <gasps> and they went to go find me and I was fucking skanking at the club lingerie. <laughs> and I was, I was wow. one of those times, though, like I would never change it because... Uh, you don't want to. Stripper no. and a cake? Yeah. Chili peppers and yeah. lingerie? Yeah. Come yeah. on. Uh, <laughs> I've seen the Chili Peppers so many times, and each time is the best. Really? Yeah. Each time. Yeah. Great show. A buddy of mine calls and goes, we're going straight to Vegas to see him in a suite. And I'm like, this is awesome. Seen him at the Palladium. Seen him everywhere. And it's is it always with other bands? Like, they're always, like, the headliner. Uh, yeah, they're the Someone's headliner. There's opening. other bands. But, That's yeah. Rad. But the Chili Peppers, they always put on a good show. Yeah, always a lot of energy. Yeah. Nice, yep. dude. So good. Have you ever seen them? No, I never have. Well, it sucks to be you. It does suck. Because the Chili Peppers. I've cool. seen some good bands, but like, I, I, that that would be one band like I yeah. asked like that. Oh, that'd, that'd be yeah. one you'd want to see? Yeah, that would be one yeah. I would want to see. Yeah. Um, I always had a crush on Kelly LeBrock. Um, you and nine million other yeah. people. No, but, but you got to fucking work with her Absolutely. and be around her. Was she fucking just like gorgeous? She was exceptional. Jesus. Yeah. Really um, beautiful, smart, funny, like really funny, dude. Yeah. Like she, <laughs> she's like one of the boys with her humor, you know, and uh, no holds barred. And working with Anthony Michael yeah. Hall and her and Downey yeah. Jr. and Bill Paxson at the same time, uh, you know, we, we were, um, it's a magic time for me in my life. You know, when people say, what's your favorite movie? It's it's you always got to like you love your first, right? Yeah. Cuz that was my first m film. Yeah. And 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 working on that movie with with that cast and working with John Hughes as a director and 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 like I was sort of alluding to earlier, you know, Downey was my mentor on that mm. because I just was in awe of uh his approach of how he conducted himself and how he prepared and then how he was uh, super uninhibited when we were working. And a lot of the stuff that we did, in fact, I'd say half of the stuff that we did was improvised because John Hughes was just letting us go. I always think that's sometimes the best in movies and in shows. Yeah. that I think the actors just feel more natural they get the part and they know what they have to put out there to like get it right yes and i always think when it's like that 
It's perfect. I got a story that always um, really changed my perspective for what it is that we do, you know. Um, The short of it is... Really? The short? Yeah. Okay. No pun intended. Yeah. (laughs) 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 Let's go with the tall of it. (laughs) The big and thick of it is. Yeah, the big and thick. There we go. The The big and thick of it is. Yeah. New work, when, guys. When <laughs> Downey and I go into the bar uh, for the party scene. I love that fucking scene. I was going to ask you about when it. When we were going to go into the door, um, we, we we knew that the line was, where's the bar? Yeah. Right? So so John comes up and he goes, uh, he goes, how you guys doing? And we go, good, good. And he goes, all right, yeah, guys, do your thing. Come in. Just do something. Do your thing. Just make something up. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I had no idea. Any, you know, sound speed, camera roll, scene <laughs> one, take three, whatever. Action. And I, and he kicks the door and I go, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> right? And we do a one take and he's like, bar. And we're like, I, 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 and we go into the bar and we're like, we sweep out of the camera and one take, he goes, we're moving on. Yeah. Right. So some years later, I think I was even at a convention. This girl comes to my table, and she's in tears, right? Now, it's been a while since a girl's cried at first sight, you know? <laughs> and and uh, the guy that's with her, I mean, she's really breaking down. Okay. And the guy that's with her goes, yo, bro, like, uh, her, her brother died recently, and he was a big fan of yours. And on his epitaph, on his tombstone, Shh, in quotes, is, yeah, how you yeah. doing? Wow. And I went, what? He's like, yeah, he used to impersonate you, and everybody kind of knew him, like you and oh, Downey, damn. like, were his dudes, like, and he would do all your shenanigans at parties and stuff, and he would always go, how you doing? <laughs> and I just, man, I started, I start, fuck, tears started yeah. rolling down my face, Without you know when you cry without your face contorting yeah mm-hmm. you know when you just get the like like yep. the soul tears come out and yep. I hugged this girl for about ten minutes man mm. and I just thought to myself what a privilege it is what an honor it is to have this moment where John goes yeah yeah just come into the party and do your shit and then years later somebody has it on their tombstone wow. And it it kind of blew my mind. So I signed, I'm going to cry right now, dude. Oh, shit. I signed a picture to her and I signed a picture to her brother that she was going to keep for him and all that. Yeah. And put at his his grave. Wow. And and it's just one of those things where sometimes, a lot of times when I was younger, I took for granted what I was doing, if I'm being honest. I didn't realize how blessed I was, how... How much of a privilege it was, how lucky I was to be starring in movies when I was 19, 20 years old and and making these kinds of movies that, you know, um, last my whole lifetime as great memories. Especially even like with like when you think about it, like with, with Nightmare on Elm Street, like you did that movie having no idea what it was going to do for you. Like and then the convention world, it's like a gravy train. You get hundreds, thousands of fans that come just for you, just for that movie, which is crazy because it's something that you did in the 80s so yeah. long ago. And it, it's it, still... and it still is the gayest horror film ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and when you fans... look good in it, though, Rob. Hell, mm, you bet I do. <laughs> when when fans, that's funny because when fans go, dude, so what's it like being in the gayest horror movie ever made? And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> they really say that? And I'm like, oh, girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've never been a horror movie fan. I've watched a couple. Friday the 13th and Halloween's probably like my extreme of that I've gone. Never Nightmare on Elm Street? No. You gotta, was, I, I, I challenge you to watch Nightmare on Elm Street t- Part 2 yeah. and not get hard. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Is the, the only way I'd get hard is there a hot chick in it. Other than that, and I'm I'm turtling the whole thing. Very straight. Is the challenge accepted or not? <laughs> challenge is very accepted. <laughs> I will let you know. 
Um, not to throw you for a loop or anything, but we do this a lot. And you've been an actor since you just said, since you were 19. Mm-hmm. Any other job you had that you think about that has had an impact on your life or that has been like, fuck, I can't believe I did that. Like for a small moment, maybe you didn't have acting gigs or anything, or even before acting, but you had a job where you're like. Well, yep. I, I did become an actor when I was 17, and Kay. I was doing commercials, and I was doing yeah. modeling, but I hated modeling. I didn't like I didn't like modeling. What didn't you like about modeling? Well, they were always telling me to stop smiling. Mm. I, didn't, I mean, that's who I am. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> no. uh, I, I, just, I just couldn't see, personally, I don't knock it. Yeah. But for me, I, I just, it, it wasn't, it wasn't me, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just, I couldn't do it. I, I wanted to do more. And becoming an actor was uh, uh, the, the the next best thing to do. Um, I think I was I was I was always dreaming about it anyway, because I grew up going to work with my dad. He was a teamster, mm. so I was watching a lot of old school movies being made, and I got to meet a lot of old school actors. I, I mean, the list is pretty incredible. I I feel blessed there too, and it wasn't like my dad was some big shot at the studio. He was you know a driver, but I would go to work with him, and I would he worked on movies like Jaws and. Close Encounters. Mm. And Those did, are big movies. He would yeah. roll up. He would roll up to the playground in like the Dukes of Hazard car and shit. You know, like <laughs> uh, my, dad was, my, my dad was awesome. Um, but um, for a while, uh, my stepdad owned the Tail the Pup hot dog stand in Hollywood, and I would work there. That's. That's legendary. the one, yeah, yeah that's the big hot legendary, dog. the big yeah. hot dog. But then you think that's all it is, and you go around, and it's a huge restaurant inside. Yeah, yeah. So no I used way. to I used to work there. That was like my office, mm. first of all. Tail of the pup. Tail of the pup. So I'd go back there and I would flip burgers, man, sling dogs with my mom and my stepdad. And uh, I, I don't really have a job that I, uh, you know, sort of th- think twice about or or, or uh, regret. Yeah. Because every, everything I've ever done, I just put 100% into it. You know, if I... I'm working at the hot dog stand or I'm making a movie or Robert Russell just made my cheeseburger. Yeah. Robert Russell just made my cheese. Yeah. What? Oh, I would throw him down too. <laughs> yeah. My uh, bacon, egg, chili cheeseburger. Oh, legendary. Damn. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. That sounds good. Jason's a big burger guy. He yeah, loves burgers. I'm we always go to burgers. eat like a different burger apple spots. Pan. Oh, I love the apple pan. Yeah. yeah. Trophy burgers I thought was really good. Trophy's good. It's a newer one. Mm-hmm. Buddy of mine owns. Yep. What was that other one we went to? Hi ho. Um, no, no. Irx. No, no, I was just saying hi. Herbs. Herbs, yeah. Herbs another new one oh, though Herbs too. Oh, burgers. That was yeah. old school. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, Sunset Grill. Haven't been. That's the oh. song. What's the one? It's in it's in uh Santa Monica. It's like the jury or the something makes a really good burger. Oh, what, real? I haven't I haven't had that one yet. I don't know what it is. No, it's old school. My manager took me. He's like, "This is this is old school," and you go there, and everybody's like lined up at five p.m. because they don't open till five. Oh wow! It's some, not Pono burger. No, it's got to be a new one. I'm not familiar. No, with. it's old. It's like the courthouse or something like that, but it's huh. down there on Santa Monica. Uh. Yeah, that's even where I live. I figured you were a Santa Monica yeah, boy by the Monica. people you know. Um, you're friends with Omar Salazar. Absolutely, I, I'm friends with him too. He's a great skateboarder friend. Uh, do you do you do you ever see him? Because I know that he was. Uh, I haven't seen him in a while. He like disappeared, and I know he had his company going, and he was still doing the skate thing as 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 hard as he could. But like, I know that he would give your your kids like boards and stuff like. Does he still come around? Like- yeah, and he was in class for a while yeah. at the Hollywood Playground. And then we uh, did a movie together. Very intense actor. Very intense. Very, very, very intense individual. Yeah. Very intense skater. Yeah, <laughs> intense skater. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. movie did you do with him? Uh, oh, shit. A senior moment, bro. Hold on. We have See. those all the time. Oh, man. I know the actress, Barbara Crampton. She's gonna kill me, dude. <laughs> you don't know the movie. You did. How you did with uh, Omar? Omar, yeah. and Barbara Crampton. Was that a horror movie? Yeah, well, it was a vampire movie. Oh, nice. Uh oh. Recent vamp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, somebody look it up. Uh, <laughs> 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 what, 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 Omar. 
Walmart. Yeah. Salazar. Bar- Barbara Crampton. Barbara Crampton. It's a vampire movie. It uh, did great. At were the you bo- a vampire in it? Just a couple years ago. Okay. Er, late 2000s. <laughs> oh, damn, don't wait. But wait. while we're looking it up, like. She's going to kill me, dude. That's have you, all right. Have we'll you seen him at all lately? I love Barbara Crampton. Jacob's wife. Jacob's wife. Thank you. It, Barbara, I knew it. I was just fucking with There we go. <laughs> I just wanted him to, Jacob's like, wife. Jacob's I wanted him to feel like he was a part of. <laughs> yeah. Jacob's wife. Yeah. Okay. Omar uh, was in that. He was great, by the way. Uh, cool little vampire movie. Mm. Uh, everybody knows who Barbara Crampton is. I mean, she's a horror icon and a uh, great actress, great lady. Sorry, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> Omar she's is fine. Omar's kind of dope in the sense that, like, he, uh, he 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 auditioned for the actor studio and like got in first go became a lifetime member and that doesn't happen like that he's like really really intense method actor like 100 percent. like i was a that was very impressive for he me. did a scene it took me so many times it took me five times i was a, a working finalist in the beginning but i had to be there for like six years like take uh, auditioning every year to become a lifetime member and even with Al Pacino, I think it took him like six, seven times. Like it, it's a hard place to get in, he and he got it first go. Uh, from Death of a Salesman at the Hollywood that's his Playground. thing. That's his thing. Death of a Salesman had me in tears. Wow, yeah. what does that place get you? The the actor studio. Yeah, you just get free classes for the rest of your life, and there's classes and there's sessions every day going on there, like every weekday, and so and there's a theater there, so you can put up work. Put up play, put up whatever you want there, and then you get critiqued on it, or you get direction from it. Like you, it, it's just it, it's a place where you don't have to. You, it, it's a family, and you don't have to pl- pay money no more for classes. But also, you can go to New York and get free classes there too. Got it's it. it's pre- a, a lot of people come out of there. It's like the CAA but it, of acting. Yeah, classes. but it doesn't. Yeah. It's not like oh, now you're gonna get jobs. It's still yeah. A lot of people there that are in the actor's studio, like, that's their thing. They've never worked any other place. They just live there. But they, that's their thing. A lot of older folks there. And uh, with a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of wisdom in that place. The only thing with the actor's studio is, like, everyone is so old that, like, I'm constantly getting emails, like, so-and-so passed, so-and-so passed. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus. Like, do you- some, some of these people were my teachers, and I'm like, fuck, man. Like, Do you think with the way the studios have changed now... And the way the entertainment world is, that places like that may be gone soon. I don't know. Maybe. You know what I mean? Because it's a whole different world. Like media. Look at this is media now. Yeah. And the way media is and the way the studios are now right now, media is fed. And it's not It's not really like it's a trade anymore. It's kind yeah. of like everybody can do it in, at any moment. Absolutely. You know, that's exactly why it needs to survive because what you just mentioned and this whole new streaming and, you know, influencers. Yeah. They'd all do themselves a favor to go and study the craft. No, I think so too. It would never be lost, you know, and that's something that um, it's kind of like, it's, 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 it's kind of like any other art form, you know, if, if you don't, read music if you don't utilize fundamentals of music if you don't utilize the fundamentals of, it's going to become a lost of, form absolutely and no. i see a lot of stuff coming out and um the acting's terrible it's garbage and it's not even me being critical it's just like me in class i'm never critical of actors i just want them to move me yeah that's yeah. how i know whether they're yeah. doing well or not not because i'm studying them and there's this thespian way i'm like yo like make me feel yeah you know make me laugh make me cry make yeah. me empathize make, make me yeah. rage like love it absolutely yeah man. Like, move me yeah it's uh, and there's a lot of yeah. stuff coming out that that's that's not moving Another, me and then there's I, stuff that does and it just rises above yeah was thinking with what you said, I feel like it, it, I don't think it'll ever go away because, especially because it's got like big names that came out of there that are so respected in like the acting world, like, like, uh, Robert De Niro, Bradley Cooper, like Ellen Burstein, like just no, big time it, people, but... like James Dean, like that. That I don't think it'll go away, maybe, but not, not, not. If it does, it'd be a travesty. Yeah. If it did, it would be a travesty. What about sure. the studios going away? 
You know what I mean? They're... Yeah, but you know what? There was never magic in those anyway. The the magic was always in the filmmakers. Outside. The business yeah. of the studios was very different from the filmmakers. That's yeah. why the filmmakers tried to do a collective with United Artists back in the day. And, yeah. you know, they, they it didn't work, but that's what I'm doing now yeah. is I'm getting together with some other artists and we're trying to do something that we feel is going to be a, a big change in the in in the in the in entertainment. This, the, the audition yeah. process nowadays is crazy because, like, even if you get a callback now, at least for things that I've had a callback for, it's a Zoom thing, and the producers and everyone that is on the callback with you, the casting director, is all blackened. Like, all you can do is hear their voice. It's so cold, and they're like, "Do this, do that," and you're like, "Where? Who's saying this?" Like, it's it's yeah. it's weird, dude. Like, it's kind of like. It sucks. Like I like the I like the 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 aspect of being able to do give your best audition, but I don't like the callback process because it's very cold. It's not welcoming. It's not warm. It's maybe it's supposed to be that way. I also way. miss just going into the room for auditions as opposed yeah. to self taping. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There was something about being able to go in the room and meet everybody and connect. Yeah, and see well, like if you could work with them. You know what I mean? Like. That's a big part of it. And then you, it goes to what I was saying earlier about getting yeah, direction. Exactly. You I, know how you are. You know the part you're going to put out, but to feel it with the person you're going to work with. Mm -hmm. so, I always like the process uh, of like going into the room too, because you go in there with like a choice, you do it. And they're like, you know, like that was really good. It's very interesting what you did. Like we love what you did, but could you try it this way? And that, that's like the second step, like seeing if you can take direction. And now you don't really get that option. <laughs> you know, it's just like you either hear something or you don't, but it's never any feedback of like what you could have done better or anything, but maybe that's just the way it's supposed to be. A lot yeah. of actors would think, you know, um, there'd be some advantage to going in and saying, hey, I can do this a hundred ways, you tell me. And I would always try to remind them that it's your job to know the character, mm -hmm. right? So you should be the one that knows the craft. You should be the one that studies. You should be the one that does the homework and prepares and knows who you are, what you're doing there, where you've been, where you're going, what is it that you want. You should always know there's a lot of questions, as you know. Yeah. There's more questions than there are answers. The questions are more important. So when an actor goes in and they have those choices like you were talking about, you're much more apt to get direction from going in with a strong choice to begin with than trying to go in there and saying, hey, what, how, you tell me. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I, I, yeah. If, I, if I'm casting and I'm looking for an actor to play a part, I want somebody that's going to come in with some strong choices. Not you know? asking me what they want, just yeah. coming in and showing me what I want. Yeah. That's yeah, someone that's I want to exactly, work with. That's, yeah. that's exactly how I got most of the jobs I did from auditioning is I would go in as the character. Yeah. I, you, I, would, I wouldn't rely on their imagination and throw myself off, by the way, and go in there and talk. And I'd go in all character, and then I'd break character when I left. Mm -hmm. With doing Jackass, Jason, that, like, was able to catapult you to, like, this this whole other world that you weren't in before um, as far as celebrity status and stuff. And, and you started getting, like, job offers and stuff for movies. Did you ever find that process difficult of, like, trying to... Like give them like a, a good character or like something that like no, worked for you. Because I've been a character ever since even before Jackass. That's why I did Jackass. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm a natural character. Got it. So to me it was like, okay, this is the the bit. Let's do this. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I always tell actors you your best ammunition is your own experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Totally so in life. When you can marry your own experiences with the facts on the text on the page, in the story, whatever it be, whatever it may be, when when you when you can combine those and let them coincide, and you can you know come from here instead of only here. Yeah. When when your mind, body, and spirit all work together, that's when you're in the pocket, right? And when you're when you're when you're acting like you're talking about Omar, uh, you know what he what was so great about Omar and a lot of other great actors is they're writing real waves, so. You're, you're connecting with an experience from your life and then, which is in a, in a roundabout way, method acting, right? You're using an experience from your life, you're connecting with it, and then you're saying the words in, in, in the scene 
with a, with with real emotion, mm -hmm. with 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 something authentic, and that's why Omar, and that's why you, by the way, getting back to the question earlier, when you came in, you, you always wore your heart on your sleeve, and that's what was the most important attribute. When you when you, I tell actors, you don't got to go to my class, go to a class, go to a class and discover what it is you have to offer, mm -hmm. you know, and then you also start to develop uh, a, a bank account, I call it, right. So you know from your own experience what you're capable of, you know. I I know I can I can c come in and 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 contribute something instead of what am I getting? What am I not getting? What if I don't get it? What if I don't remember my lines? What if I don't say it right? What if they don't like me? That's all horseshit. But when you go in and say and the, and the approach is what am I bringing to the table? What can I what can I give to make this story better? Mm -hmm. Right. That's when that's when, you know, your creative juices start flowing. And you a lot of times I would surprise myself because stuff would come out that I didn't premeditate. And it was and it was just real and in the moment. And when you can trust yourself, that's where I think acting class is an advantage is you learn to trust. You learn how to be free. Let Hawkins was in class once, man. <laughs> and he was talking about the seamless start. And. The other actors were asking questions like, what do you mean? He said, well, it reminds me of a, of a story about my father and I. And he starts telling this story about his father and him. And about halfway through the story, I, I, I thought it sounded familiar. And I'm crying. Everybody's crying. And he finishes the story and he goes, that's a scene from Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. <laughs> yeah, perfect. He, he, he fucking bumped everybody's head. He, we thought it was an example of what he was talking about, but the seamless start was he started the scene without us knowing he started the scene. Yeah, seamless. Seamless start. And it was, nice. and it was really, it blew my mind, you know, because he, he got me. And he moved me. And he is you know, a very powerful individual and it comes out in his work. Yeah. Well, Robert. No, we... no, <laughs> not that. <laughs> He's ending it wrong. Uh, I was going to say, well, you end it then. I would love to take this class even longer. And this class was given to you Absolutely. the viewer for free. So now maybe take a little in here and learn and maybe take the next step to become seamless in your life. But also, if you want, Robert Rustler does <laughs> run a class every Monday night. That's right. And uh, where is the location that your class it's is? It's in Santa Monica. Just uh, you know, hit me up on my Instagram, at Robert Rustler. The Hollywood Playground. It did a lot for me, man. The it Hollywood really... Playground on Facebook. Yeah. Check out uh, some stuff that's coming out. Yeah, what, what are your movies that are coming out? So I was, I was mentioning the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Pretty Boy. And uh, I'm uh, starting the Big Picture Collective with some other artists. And uh, we have a lot of IP and a, a lot of great seasoned actors and, and crew members that are coming together. And um, I got... One of my movies that I'm, I'm writing now is called The Romeos, and it's about my life transitioning from the backyard, surf scene, kegger party, fucking thrashing, raging thrashing movie. into the Hollywood underground club scene. Mm, nice. And uh, that one, I'm really excited about that one. It's a little, uh, a little autobiography of my life. I've never seen Hollywood depicted correctly in the 80s. The way I lived it. Mm. Still haven't seen it. It wasn't day glow. And like <laughs> just, dude, I'm talking about the dope shit, right? Yeah. And then, uh, and I got another one that I'm writing called Pray for the Dead, which is a supernatural spaghetti western horror. Black um, Asylum. Black Asylum. Oof. Yeah, I got That's uh, a good one. Holy Rollers. I, so we have this whole plethora of stuff that we're coming out with, mm. and I really want to... Um, make some strong movies that create change right now because that's what the world needs right now. We're changing anyway, regardless, mm -hmm. but utilizing uh, uh, more solidarity and, uh, and more of uh, the divine feminine, which is what we need. Testosterone's been killing the fucking world for a long time now. 
it's time to let some more women get involved, right? Uh, money, power, and prestige, look where we're at. Yeah. But without getting political or, you know, righteous about it, man, like what we're trying to do is inspire people for change. And we want to have messages in our movies that uh, in invoke that kind of thought and those kinds of feelings. So um, we're really excited about integrating the business more and, um, and, and, and allowing the content to have more meaning and impact because um, where we are and where we've been doesn't have to be where we're headed. Mm -hmm. And also, it's, I, I think it's good because I feel like the business is kind of broken and needs to be. There's a lot broken. And you know what's really the most broken is there's just so much money before humanity going on right now, man. It's really sad. Mm, that's true. Oh, that's I got another true. movie out, uh, coming out called Dream. I'm really excited about that. It's uh, it's it's really exposing uh, child trafficking. Oh shit! Whoa! And uh, that's big. I'll tell you, uh, I I read the script. I, I I agreed to do the movie, and I went the first day, and I met the director and producer. This this is this is what, it's kind of like that story earlier with the epitaph, is. Um, they, they welcomed me on set, and I was about to go do my shooting. They said, hey, we're going to have a little production meeting. Grab some lunch. So as I was sitting down to lunch, they had this production meeting. And not only were they making a movie about exposing child sex trafficking, but they were also in the trenches really saving kids from child sex trafficking. And they had saved one kid that week, and they were uh, negotiating with a, a government. I don't want to say which. Mm -hmm. A government to get 10 kids back from that country that were uh, child slaves in that country. Jeez. And they actually raised the money and negotiated them to come back. So these are the kinds of filmmakers that inspire me that not only are they making movies about things that are important, but they're also actually doing something about it. Changing the world. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Nice. Awesome. That's good. I think on that note, yeah, a big one, we can say sayonara. Sorry, no, Thanks, you guys. I love Thank you guys. You, man. Thank, Thank you, Robert. Thank you for Appreciate coming you. on our show, man. Hell yeah.